Is there a silent majority? Uh, let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Cato Institute has this article, poll. 62% of Americans say they have political views they're afraid, afraid to share. 50% of strong liberals support firing Trump donors. 36% of strong conservatives support firing Biden donors. 32% are worried about missing out on job opportunities because of their political opinions. Right away. Well, where, a, do, where does the 62% come from then out of those numbers? It, it doesn't. It's everybody have political views they're afraid to share. Well, these, these that's are, look, what I've been saying for a long time now. These numbers are among liberals. So like 50% of the liberals okay. would fire someone for being a Trump supporter. Well, so so not in like the, the classic liberal sense, because technically we're all liberals. Like America is a liberal com- country. You know, you're, you're talking about like the far Classical left. Classical liberalism. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So not like the crazy left, like liberal. Exactly. Okay. Well, so they're probably using strong liberal in the in the modern sense, which okay. means leftist. Right, right. Which is, I really can't stand it. I agree. I agree with you. It's not the same thing. It's like they're yeah. trying to make being liberal a negative thing. And that's that couldn't be further from the truth. There's some interesting stuff here. Let's read this. Go ahead. And it sounds like we may have located the silent majority. Hmm. A new, I mean, literally, it says they, they're scared to share their opinions. 62%. Look at this. 62% agree. The political climate these days prevents me from saying things I believe because others might find them offensive. Oh. Uh, is it offensive to say you support Black Lives Matter? Nope. Every brand and corporation does it. Right. So I will tell you this. Well, actually, yes, it does to specific people. For right, sure. right, right, right. And they've, they've made but it listen, very clear that it's offensive to them. If major corporations and brands have no problem whatsoever supporting progressive causes, mm-hmm. they believe that it's safe to share. True. That says to me, if these people are scared to say things, it's not what Pepsi said because Pepsi said it. Right. It's mainstream and popular. And what's the what's the t- statistic on Americans that approve of All Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter? Like 58% view All Lives Matter as positive and, and like 46 to 40 or whatever yeah. view Black Lives Matter as positive. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of overlap, mm-hmm. but there's more Americans who view All Lives Matter positively. And this is according to The Economist and YouGov, I believe. Yeah. Let's read this. They say... A new Cato national survey finds that self uh, that self censorship is on the rise. Nearly two thirds, sixty two percent of Americans say that the political climate these days prevents them from saying things they believe because others might find them offensive. The share of Americans who self censor has risen several points since twenty seventeen, when fifty eight percent of Americans agreed with the statement. These fears cross partisan lines. Majorities of Democrats, 52%, independents, 59 and Republicans, 77 all agree 77. they have political opinions they're afraid to share. Yeah. And how many of them are going to say, I'm satisfied with this existence, or are going to say, give me the guy who made fun of Rosie O'Donnell on stage? <laughs> you, you ever see that video from Trump? Yeah, I have. Where, she, where Megyn Kelly is like, what did he say? You called women fat pigs? And he goes, only Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> and then everyone starts cheering and laughing. Yeah. He's a funny guy. Man. Liberals are divided on political expression. Strong liberals stand out, however, as the only political group who feel they can express themselves. Mm. Nearly six in 10, 58 percent of staunch liberals feel they can say what they believe. That's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Right here. How, what, what's read? That's got, me. However, centrist liberals feel differently. A slim majority, 52 percent of liberals feel they have to self-censor, as do 64 percent of moderates, 77 percent of conservatives. This demonstrates that political expression is an issue that divides the Democratic coalition between centrist Democrats and their left flank. And thus, the silent majority confirmed. Mm. Yeah. You know what this means? 77% of conservatives aren't speaking up at all. This means strong liberals feel the majority. They can say whatever they can say for whatever they want. Yeah. yeah. Because their politics are mainstream in brands and media. So wait, strong lip liberals would be like leftists. the leftists. Right. Okay. So I am not a, a leftist liberal right. in any sense. So look, I am a classic liberal. Think about what this means. If the, if there's a majority of moderates, centrist liberals and conservatives who feel they can't say certain opinions, yeah. those opinions do not exist in the political conversation. And that that but, that shows, though, that there are people on the left that probably are voting for Trump. This shows that the majority of the country isn't saying what they really think. Yep. They're not speaking up. They're silent. That explains the polls. And they're the majority. Boom! Wait, let me get my my full camera. Hold on. Boom! Smash that like button. Oh, that felt so good. I feel vindicated right now. Ooh, I need some smashes. But. I had to get that off my chest. Go, Does that mean they'll vote for Trump? 
It doesn't matter. I, they, they exist. They do. They exist. And it's proof they exist. And it, this proves well, what people aren't. We, we talked about this earlier. So you can, you can go out and be like, I'm voting for Biden. And you might get some weird looks, but that's the extent of no, it. No, 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 no. Even if, if you walked into a group of secret Trump supporters yeah. and went, I'm voting for Biden, they'd go, yeah, here, here. Yeah. Oh, they'd lie. Cool. Good for you. So if you can publicly say you're voting for Biden and everyone cheers, yep. then Trump supporters are going to be lying about who they're voting for. Exactly. Oh, of course. So this is hello. the biggest and most important point in the polling oh, is there's two, po- there's two things. One, I think it was the New York Times that found telephone polls tend to overrepresent Biden support. Of course. And because when a journalist calls you yep. and says, hi, I'm a journalist from the New York Times. Ugh. Who are you voting Ugh. for? You go, I'm not telling this guy. He's going to dox me. He's going to. And, and he sounded creepy. Seriously. That was the point. <laughs> <laughs> Channeling a little Biden there. A little Biden. Oh, man. Look, I got to say, though. I got to say. Look fat. Uh, Here's the deal. That, felt, that feels good, though. Just having like an actual like proof of what i've been saying of what i believe this is what this is most americans it is like perfect like sense. america being strong they they want america to so, be strong so listen, they want the jobs what do you, here what do you what do you period what, what were those things that nancy pelosi was wearing kente cloth is that yeah, it? yeah. Kente cloth. so what do you think regular americans are thinking when they see the democrats drop to their knees wearing kente cloths they're going to be like what is I happening know. we don't like that yeah listen look at this poll right here Staunch liberals stand out as the only group who feels they can share their political opinions. Agree or disagree? The political climate these days prevents me from saying things I believe because others might find them offensive. Mm. Strong liberal is the only faction that disagrees with that statement. That means what they say is more so safe to say. Yep. And most other people are afraid to say what they believe. Conservatives and strong conservatives are like, I can't do it. What that means is everybody is lying because no one feels like it's safe to say these things. So, I mean, look, when Adam did his his bit where he's like, you know, you, you said you were going to vote for Trump. Yep. Fa- uh, uh, it, gets, it goes on Facebook. 2.4 million views and Facebook deleted it. Yep. Hmm. Now, what would happen if you were like, you got to vote for Biden, man? Biden's the, the way, the truth. You know, he's the Put only- it at the top of the algorithm. Yep. You get a lot fewer views, but you'd be at the top of the algorithm. People wouldn't be sharing it, but they would not ban you. Yep. Same thing with Twitter, man. And I, I was warning about this like a long time ago. What happens when they start censoring and all this stuff? They have they have whipped themselves into a paranoid delusional state that they believe is reality. That's true. They're, they're, they're eating their own refuse, believing it's true. But will this translate into a victory for Trump? We don't know. I mean, it, what scares me is they, they keep saying like, well, Trump's Trump's, you know, election fraud. Like he's going to he's going to try to do all this stuff. And I'm like, no, everyone's going to vote for him. You're 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 afraid. Dude. You're, you're afraid, Democrats. They are. And they should be because the majority of Americans are going to vote for Trump, period. This is uh, you know, you know what I'm going to say? If you haven't subscribe notification bell and i'll tell you why because this next paragraph explains everything oh boy i i I, we started this show and i was thinking like we'll probably have some decent growth the show's been exploding we're getting a hundred thousand subscribers per month on average in the past couple months it's nuts i want that i want that doubled (laughs) you guys are amazing it's amazing but check it out check it out enough for adam there's a very good reason why and they've they've nailed it look at this okay in 2017 most centrist liberals felt confident they could express their views at 54%. However, today, slightly less than half, 48% feel the same. The share who feel they cannot be open increased seven points from 45% to 2017 to 52% today. In fact, there have been shifts across the board where most people among all political groups feel they are walking on eggshells. Boom. Wow. There are conservative shows that have always been conservative. Yep. And they tell you conservative things and conservatives like that. But there are very few shows where there are like centrist, moderate, center left or center right opinions that like regular people who are like, I'm not very strong politically. Here's how I think. But no one says it because you're either safe on the conservative side where, you know, you have your conservative allies or the progressives who think everyone's on their side and they're right. So we start doing things where we're like, I'm saying, you know, I guess I'll end up voting for Trump. I'm leaning that direction. He's not that bad. You're saying I'm I'm not going to vote for him. But this is this is a show with a, a hippie skateboarding pro skateboarder rock star guy who like first started reading about Trump and also was like, whoa, I'm going to vote for this guy. Whoa, his policies are actually legit. 
He's he's actually pretty great. I'm not saying he's he's not that bad. I'm saying I actually really right. like him as a president. And and so this is exactly what I'm saying. With so many people scared to say the kind of things you're saying. Yep. You know, I was talking to somebody who's like a prominent Hollywood figure, and you'd be surprised. I've mentioned this before. There are a ton, especially after doing Rogan. I got hit up by a ton of like Hollywood LA types who are secretly conservative. And not necessarily conservative, but like politically homeless liberals. Yeah. So intellectual dark web is probably an easy way to explain what kind of views these people have. And they're saying things like they either did vote for Trump, they're going to vote for Trump, but they know their careers and lives will be destroyed if they say anything. Yep. So where do they go when they themselves are like hipster skateboarding vegans? They don't agree with conservatives. And so I was talking to this Hollywood dude and he was like, listen, man, you got to understand like when I turn on, you know, YouTube and I see a dude wearing like a beanie and a hoodie or whatever, yeah. and you're like a skateboarder musician who's yeah. like, you, you, what, what, what we need to understand is like, finally, it feels like I get it because it's, it's really funny when the far left tries to claim that I or we are like far right or conservative or whatever, yeah. because you ask a conservative and they're like, no, of course not. Those guys are liberals. You know, you look at Dave Rubin, you look at Ben Shapiro, it's like the perfect example. It's like, clearly they're at odds with tons of each other's, well, while Dave has moved more to the right, you get the point. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at traditional conservatives, you see, like go to CPEC, everyone's wearing a suit, they're dressed up, they're not a beanie wearing skateboarder. Yeah. So all of a sudden now, you know, we're having conversations from a very centrist liberal perspective yep. that didn't exist before. I mean, I'm, I don't claim to be a Republican now. You know, I, I, I never really claimed to be a Democrat. I would have, I probably would have answered if someone asked me, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I probably would have said Democrat in the past. But then again, Default I had no idea what anything politics, like this whole year has just been me like learning the political landscape. So now that I understand it, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I'm an American, period. Yeah. Well, it. Trump is not uh hardcore conservative. I know. Even Vox, the progressive outlet, said he was a moderate. They try to claim he's far right, he's fringe, he's all these awful things, and it's like his policies really did overlap a lot with, th th this, is, this is what people need to realize. One of Donald Trump's successes was that his policies did overlap with Democrats 10 years ago. It made it very difficult for them to find a position. Because when, when Trump comes out and says, we're going to secure our borders, we're going to deal with immigration, illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. Well, most people are like, that sounds great. Democrats, what do you have to offer? If they came out and said, we completely agree, but we're slightly weaker than Trump. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, uh, no, hmm. no, thanks. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I got something. Build back better. Build, build back better. Build, build back better. We got to build back better. You're like, lying dog you, face pony soldier. Listen, Biden, just say make America great again. That's what, <laughs> that's what you want to say, man. Like, come on. Really? Yeah. Build, build back better. What does that even mean? Did you it see? It means make America great again. That's what you're trying to. That's what you want. Get out of here. It's like he's a he's a dollar store version of Trump, right? He wants to be like Trump. Actually, actually, that's unfair. That's un even unfair. He's like a uh, he's in the dumpster of the dollar store. Aww. It's like it's the it's the it's <laughs> no 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 no. You know what Biden is? Biden is like when you see those memes of stolen IP from from China. Yeah. Where it's like Spider Man with Wolverine claws and it says Star Wars on it. <laughs> yeah. That's Biden. Right. Plagiarism, uh, confusing, makes no sense. Yep. You know, in a, in, in a, China. it's funny. It makes you laugh. <laughs> Seriously. So we have his face to make fun of. That's got all sorts of layers to it. That joke. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I really I like, like it. that. That that was good. That's multi layers. But you've seen those things. I love. It. I have. Oh yeah. It's like good. Star Wars and it's Spider Man with Wolverine claws. You're <laughs> like off brand, but worse. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> listen, listen. Not to rag on dollars. Listen stores. here, Pat. You go to a dollar store. They got your essentials, man. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they, they got a little bit true. of everything. It's not like Walgreens. No. Nah, but I can't stand it though because that's part part of the issue of of what we do as Americans. I mean, I was, I'll just talk about myself. You know, I was used to just going to buy the product that I need. Oh, it broke. Go buy a new product. Oh, it broke. Go buy a new product. And that is across the board what we need to get rid of. What happened to the days where we fix everything? We have our one cups. We have, you know, we have the things that we know we can fix and keep them forever and their quality. Amer that's what America made is to me. Build back better. <laughs> build, build back better. <laughs> yeah. Check this out. Check this out. We got more data. Look at this. Oh, man. Would you support or oppose firing a business executive from their job if it became known they privately donated money to? 31% among all polled said they would support firing a Trump donor. 22% would support firing a Biden donor. Conservatives 
uh, would not want only 36 percent would say fire a Biden donor. But 50 percent of strong liberals would fire a Trump donor. You know what that means? Yep. If 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 orange listen, man bad. It's very, very clear. TDS. If 31 percent of all people think you should be fired for donating to Trump, you better not say you're voting. You're, you don't right. you donated to Trump. Yep. You better right. shut up. Now, 22 percent would uh, among all people would fire someone for uh, uh, donating to Biden. So there's probably a lot of people who aren't going to talk too much about that either. But still too partisan. It's strong liberals who control cultural institutions. Absolutely. And, and half of them will fire you if they find out. Strong conservatives, they ain't running Disney and, and, and Gillette or Unilever or whatever. No. They're not doing it. So what are you really worried about? And not only that, are strong conservatives going to make phone calls? They're not. They're going to say, well, that guy's a, you know, dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, what are you guys doing later? A liberal is going to be like, ah, call him now. Get everybody on the email list. Let's show up to his house with bricks. Oh, seriously. Yeah, it's frightening. Strong liberal. What does mm. strong liberal mean? That's ridiculous. 32% worry their political views could harm their employment. They say nearly a third of employed Americans say they personally are worried about missing out on career opportunities or losing their job if their political opinions became known. These results are particularly notable given that the most personal cam uh, that most personal campaign contributions to political candidates are public knowledge and can easily be found online. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Trump's donations would be substantially higher if wow. cancel culture wasn't a thing. And that might be the point. Interesting. You know how many text messages I get from progressives because I donated to Andrew Yang? It's annoying. It's really annoying. <laughs> really? Like nonstop, dude. And like, I'm the, the, I'm in, I'm running for, you know, Arkansas. And I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. Get out of here. Get out of here. And so it was really funny. I got some progressive texted me and I'm very polite. Um, they said something like, uh, hey, you know, we see that you're a fan of Yang. We're running. He's endorsed us. Would you consider con contributing? I'd say, I no, I appreciate, you know, you reaching out. Best of luck. Please don't contact me in the future. They message me again and they're like, hey, it's a different name now, but the same number like we, we're, we're hoping to get some donations for our candidate. And I'm like, I asked you last time to stop, you know, t uh, texting me. I'm not going to donate. And they donate again. And I responded the last time with if you text me one more time, I'm going to donate to your opponent. And that <laughs> and that was the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, please don't do that. We'll stop. I'm sorry. That's, no, that's, so that's you, go ahead. Hold on. Yeah. Give me one sec. This is something that Carlin Borisenko does. When people give her trouble on Twitter, she tells them. She tells them up front. She's like, you're giving me a hard time. Please stop. And then if they continue, she says, I'm going to donate $25 every time you insult me to Donald <laughs> Trump. And she does. And she has a lady for whom she has donated $150 so far. That's amazing. And she won't block. And she won't mute. Uh, and she's like, we're doing this. Dude, Let's Carlin's go. Awesome. I got That's a really man. good idea. Do you remember when I got here and I was getting those text messages from the Bernie guys from Bernie? Oh yeah, that's right. So I I donated to Bernie. You were, you were getting back Bernie stuff before 2016. Look at this I guy. I was all about that. I this was, Bernie guy. I liked him in 2016. Me too. <laughs> I don't. I didn't like him this this right. go around. He, he, listen, in 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 Bernie's original campaign, he was like no open borders. That's yep. a Koch brothers proposal. Right. Here, here. Unions, strong working class, you know, support. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. Now what is he saying? Open borders. Decriminalize border crossings. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give Dude. them all health care. Like, what? Give them, give yep. the people coming off, right off the bat, give them health care? Wait, no. I, 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 I don't I, agree with I that did a at longer, all. I did a longer breakdown of Bernie's positions, yeah. how he like flipped on a bunch of issues, mm -hmm. and now it doesn't seem to make sense anymore. But notably, I remember the big change was when he said white people didn't know what it was like to be poor. Yeah. But but go ahead, tell me tell me that story. Well, no, so they, they started hitting me up, and I'm like, all right, Please, please stop. I, I don't I don't support Bernie anymore. I, I'm not I'm not having this. And then just like you said, it's, it you know, three days later, it was another person. Hey, it's Mike with the Bernie campaign or something. And and I was like, Tim, like, look at this. You were like, oh, man, ask them about. Uh, I don't remember the millionaires or the billions. Well, like, ask him why he stopped saying millionaires and just saying billionaires. <laughs> and we, we actually had fun. We, we him and I basically just trolled trolled these people for a little while. And then finally, I was like, look, I, I've had enough of this. Don't so, don't hit me up again. I, I always do this because people don't believe me. <laughs> so I pulled it up while you were talking. Oh, PolitiFact ding Sanders for saying white people don't know poverty. Ooh. That was huge to me. I was like, whoa, Bernie, dude. Yeah. That does not sound about? like you, man. All of a sudden, he embraced this weird insanity. So, yeah, 
They've uh, do they have the link to? Uh, they don't have the link. And wait, and wait, hold on. Oh, this is this is great. There, he's working now with Biden, right? Yeah, and well, on a unity platform. Hold on, wait, but didn't Biden say poor people, poor kids are just as smart as white kids? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> that's that's the problem, man. So maybe maybe it was my naivete. Oh man, maybe they, maybe listen, maybe I was just naive. They're a pair, aren't they? and when I thought Bernie was great, it was because to be honest. I, I was following a lot of his old speeches, a lot of the memes, a lot of the things my friends were sharing, and I wasn't actually digging in. I was just looking at Bernie on the surface, and I was happy. I was like, this guy sounds like he's consistent, and it sounds like we have someone who actually cares. Yeah. And then give in the chance. In a split second, he was like, I'll take the money. Yep. Just pay me the million dollars. I'll write the book. I'll buy another house. And there's Bernie. Yep. Yeah, right. Spare me, dude. The Bernie billionaires. Was- the billionaires. It's, that's now he's just talking about the billionaires. Yeah, dude. My favorite thing about Bernie is how he would say the millionaires and the billionaires in this country. Then he became a millionaire, and he goes the the billionaires in this country. <laughs> yeah, you can still rag on the on the millionaires and be a millionaire, Bernie. You don't gotta stop. Yeah, but yeah, he really did, and yep. he, he got called out in the media for it. That we joked about this before. That like Bernie used to be on the outside of the mansion, looking through the window, yelling to everyone behind him, "We're gonna get in the millionaires and billionaires." And then finally, someone opened the door and said, "Hey, Bernie." Come on in. Leave them out there. And he goes, oh, okay. Then he comes inside, and he's inside sm- sipping wine going, oh, yeah, the uh, the billionaires. Yeah, you know, <laughs> all this good stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think That's it. The date he made a million bucks. Yeah, yep. By how he stopped referring exactly. to it. You're like, you, you can look at when his campaign removed millionaires <laughs> yep. and then be like, now, let, now let's look at, like, sales and his tax forms. It's like, you know the exact moment he became a millionaire. Yep. Did you do that? I, I, I'd like to see that data. That's pretty hilarious. I'm really curious. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you didn't actually do it? No, I haven't. I'm disappointed I know. in both I know. of you right now. I'm sorry, now. it just occurred to me just, I'm just now. Saying, I'm just saying, I'm just, right, I'm a little right. disappointed right it's, now. It's the year he put out his book and then he released his tax returns, I guess. Mm-hmm. And he's like a millionaire. Okay. Just barely though, but he's a millionaire. It's, you know, uh. I do think, I do think a lot of the criticism towards him for being a millionaire is unfair because you can be rich and advocate for, you know, dumb ideas. Yeah. You know, just because you're rich doesn't mean you're smart. You can be self-aware. Yeah, and, and 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 maybe Bernie's like, well, I made a million dollars. I should give it away. And then he doesn't donate because like another big scandal was that he donated a smaller percentage of his income than like most millionaires do. Yeah. So I don't blame him, man. You know, he's not he's not been a particularly wealthy guy most of his life. He's old. He's very old. Yeah. And finally, now he made a million bucks. He must have been like, we can finally have that summer home we've always dreamed of. You know, it's really I feel I feel for him. You know, it's really interesting to me how a sen. I just looked it up. A senator makes under two hundred thousand dollars a year and they're all millionaires how do they that's all become weird. millionaires they're millionaires before that's not necessarily true well was, was bernie a millionaire before that's true we were just talking about it you ran so for president how are you gonna spin them that them. No, no, no 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 it's, it's not spinning it it's that a lot of them are only able to win because they're millionaires because they've had long careers they're high-ranking individuals they have connections okay and they can fundraise off other very wealthy people for political action committees and stuff like that okay so that, but the, but a lot of Congress is really poor. The funny thing about Congress, people don't seem to understand, is that they get one hundred seventy-four thousand a year, which that's a lot of money. Yeah. It's- but they have to maintain a, a living residence in their home districts and in D.C. So there's actually a story about a lot of them who sleep in their congressional offices, oh. and they're not they're not supposed to do it. But they, what are you going to do? You, you can't, you know, it's right. there, You can't. They can close their office. You can't come in. I guess they shower there or something. But I got I got to be honest, man. If I was in Congress. I'd absolutely do that. Yeah. I'm not going to waste money. What do I look like? I guess when you grow up frugal and poor, you're like, no, no, no. I don't need an infinity pool. <laughs> like, you'd, you'd have to be some kind of lunatic, you know, some kind of deranged psychopath to get elected to Congress and then go to like some luxury apartment building with an infinity pool and like a Whole Foods in the lobby. You, you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, I know exactly. What kind what you of mean. insane person would do that and then demand a raise? Yeah. Are you, are you talking about a certain somebody right now? I I don't I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't that's, know what you mean. That's oddly okay. specific, but All right. no, no, All right. yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Alexandria Ocasio Ocasio Cortez. Okay, I thought so. She she's she's she said that they should pay Congress more. I actually agree. Okay, they should. However, it's like you gotta you got apparently there's like an infinity pool on her roof. I don't know if that's true, whatever. But she's <laughs> in like very nice DC apartments, and there's like a, a Whole Foods apparently. You know, honestly, I don't track her living circumstance, but I know that Michelle Cruz Cabrera, who was challenging her in the primary, like talked about this all the time. Yeah. So, look, if you want to ask for a raise for Congress, there are reasons to do this. We want to disincentivize corruption. We want to make sure that people who get in are incentivized to do work 
successfully for the people. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean you give them a million dollars and maybe a raise doesn't make sense, but it's an argument for potentially some kind of pay structure that... And a can, limit. Like, like Andrew Yang said, something like pay them millions of dollars, but then they're no longer eligible for private income. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, as soon as you enter this, that way you can't be bribed. Yeah, Once like you that, leave, actually. we'll give you a job and you can't become lobbyists. You know, there is something about AOC that I do like. It is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Youthful she, exuberance? She, well, sure, but <laughs> it, it's it's more than that. It She is a celebrity as a senator. Congresswoman. Oh, okay, right, right. Con- yeah, yeah. Excuse me, as a congresswoman. So, but that's kind of what we, we need. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. We got to stop idolizing movie stars so much and realize that the people that are actually making the decisions for our lives like we got to look at them and and pay more attention to them and 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 look at them and and want to be more like them like i'm not saying i want people to be like aoc but she's proving that there can be a celebrity status in what she's doing well so so let me let me let me build on top of that i actually I do like AOC as a politician okay. compared to what the rest of the Democrats have to offer mm-hmm. for the most part. Okay. Because I would rather have an inept braggart celebrity who is not part of the crony corrupt class of business interests and all that stuff. You know what Sounds I mean? Sounds familiar to me. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Like the president of the United and, 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 States of America. And I've right made now. this Boom. I, I've called AOC like a mini kind of Trump yeah. many times. I can see that actually. However, there are much better people than AOC in terms of real populist politicians. You, like, like I, I would say uh, Matt Gates, for instance, would be like a more principled version of AOC. AOC's, what we, need are, what we need to do is we need to get rid of these incumbents who have built careers off being politicians and don't actually do anything. Yeah, exactly. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, yeah, Nadler, get them out of there. Biden, same thing. Right, exactly. They're all the same. They're not making any help. They're not helping anybody but themselves. AOC, in my opinion is one of the best Democrats simply because she came, like she's not a part of the of, of the corrupt yeah, D.C. Outsider. establishment. And, however, that's, and however, that's where it stops. <laughs> exactly. And now and now I'll say she is yeah. she is far from my favorite politician, yeah. period. And she has a whole list of problems. Yeah. Ineptitudes. <laughs> Listen, but I'll tell you what, man. I'd rather have someone who's really dumb than someone who's really corrupt. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I'd choose either of them if I had a choice of somebody else. And people... People, like, then this is the thing. People like to say Trump is dumb, and it's like they couldn't be further from the truth. That could be further from the truth. Not at all. He is yeah. he is a smart cookie, man. He knows what he's doing. He may not be the smartest person in the world. You can argue whether or not 4D chess is a real thing, but I, I get so annoyed when I talk to people, and they're like, man, that guy's so dumb. And I'm like, if you think he's dumb and he became president, then what does that mean about you? Like, yeah. what does it say about you? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's true. Listen, man, if the billionaire philandering uh, uh, president, TV show host, reality, uh, real estate mogul yeah. is dumb. And you working at Starbucks, man, come on. Yeah, I said I said to someone, I was like, well, you know he has a, a degree in economics, right? And, so they, they, and they tried to <laughs> argue with me that he didn't. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, he no, he actually does. You can, can look it up. It. No, no, he does not. No, I'm sorry. No, you're Did wrong. Think he didn't go to school? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he, he did. He went to he went he got it from the university of pennsylvania like i know it i saw the like what are you talking about look it up yourself no i don't have to look it up i know but to that's be wrong. fair aoc also has a degree in economics this okay all makes sense but that trump was a billionaire aoc <laughs> was a bartender now 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 i'm absolutely not dragging aoc for being a right. bartender i hate that when people are like go back to serving bars blah blah i'm no, like no. that's i love the fact that she was a bartender this right. is America, man. Yeah, it's proving that we any but any one yep. person with the right ideas can make it into into Listen, office and make a difference. That's what I want to start seeing. I want to see all the all of the crony Republicans and Democrats fired. Yep. There are right now more principled Republicans in my opinion than Democrats. But the and it's because the Democratic Party is like it's it's led by lunacy, pandering to yeah. extremists who don't actually know what they're, what they're talking about. And regular people are like, I don't want to be involved in that anymore. That's a good point. So now you're probably going to see you're probably going to see a lot of centrist liberals, not all of them, but many of them probably voting for Republican because it's a safer and more stable bet. Right. But I'll tell you what, I will take more AOCs over Nancy Pelosi's. <sighs> if, if, if she Nancy, scares me. Nancy Pelosi is, is just awful. And I've, I've actually said, had nice words about her in the past about their feud with AOC. But at this point, I'm like, that was a mistake. Hmm. AOC is a lot of things. And not... and, and uh, <laughs> 
Smart is not one of them <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways. But, you know, I will give her credit for the successes she's had. I don't think all of her ideas are bad. I've actually, when she first won the primary, I went through her, her campaign positions. I agree with many of them. Prison reform, things like that. But she's become too much of a celebrity who cares more about the buzzwords than about legitimate functioning policy. She's done dumb things like the Green New Deal. I don't like any of that. Yeah. But I would rather have a, a stupid person who believes in their cause than a corrupt person who's trying to steal money from the coffers. Yep. When I look to the establishment Democrats, I see people who just want me to give them my money. There are people who are like, if I get elected, I'm rich and successful and I can control everything. I see people like AOC and she's, in my opinion, not very bright. That's just my opinion. People can disagree. But at least she's not part of whatever that weird, gross swamp monster machine is. Let me ask you a question. Do you what do you think about term limits? I am uh, 50 50. I used to say yes, but then someone made a really good point in the Super Chat in one episode when they said, what if you have a Rand Paul, a really good, or a Ron Paul, mm -hmm. a really yeah. principled you know, politician that you want to be there for you, why should they not be able to run anymore? Well, I, I, I can answer that question. It's those types of, like, if we actually start looking at, at these representatives as our idols and, like, wanting to be there, th that, that one person, that Rand Paul, is going to show what a good senator is, what a good politician is. And we're going to have more of those type of people trying to get into politics. And it's going to continue with the generations that follow. You know, there, there comes a point yeah. where it feels like the older generation loses touch with the younger generation and there needs to be a gap there. Instead, right now, it's like all these people have been there for so long. So they're, you know, the, the newer generation aren't even getting into politics anymore because everybody wants to be YouTubers. Everybody wants to be right. famous. Everyone wants to be a, a, an actor or a musician. And it's like, OK, well, well, we, we, we don't want vapid look like. I'm 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 saying I'd rather have AOC over Pelosi, but I'd rather have a million other people over AOC. Okay. I'm just saying like I think the establishment Dems are the bottom of the barrel, but I I'm not going to vote or support AOC. I'm just saying it's like so we don't want vapid celebrity mon like influencers to become politicians. Sure. Yeah, of course. Then they're more concerned about how they look on Instagram or on on C-SPAN than they do about actually passing bills. Okay. But we do need passionate populist people who care about principle. And so we have a handful of them. Yeah. We need a lot more. We do. I absolutely agree. That's that's why I'm seeing a lot of younger younger people running for, for Congress. You know, yep. people my age that are, are making differences. Look, man, even even far leftists. They they're they're taking charge, man. A lot of the far a lot of younger far leftists are challenging establishment older uh, Democrats. Yeah. That's why I mean and, but and I, I think, Well, I mean, we just did this article that people are even afraid. To, to tell people what their political views are if they're right-leaning, if they're conservative. Yeah. So if it's not okay well, to even... even centrists. Ex even yeah. centrists, exactly. Yeah. So if you're not ev even able to talk about your political views, if you're if you're steering towards on the conservative side of things, then, of, well, then, of course, the, the leftists are going to be, be riding in and taking over. So we have to have more conversations and let it be okay and have people that are more on the right side coming up and, and becoming younger senators and, and representatives then. Section 230 reform. That's that's one thing we need to do. Absolutely. 100% agree The reason, the reason why this liberal, strong liberal bias exists where they can say whatever they want, it's, it's, it's so obvious, man. Let me show you this data point real quick, and then we'll jump over to Super Chats. When you see this graph, I'll tell you exactly why this is. Strong liberals disagree. They can say what they want. Everyone else agrees they can't. Why? Mm. These people will be banned from Twitter instantly. Exactly. These people get carte blanche. Mm -hmm. Yep. Boom. That, that is exactly it. what I'm talking about. Rebalance the system. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify, and we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all in the next episode.